Hello everyone and welcome to QuickMed, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we are going to discuss radioactive iodine uptake scan results, so let's get to it. Let's start by going over the indications for a radioactive iodine uptake scan, also known as thyroid scintigraphy. A thyroid scan can help us determine the underlying cause of hyperthyroidism. It can also help us evaluate thyroid nodules when they're found on clinical exam, often incidentally, as well as assessing response to treatment. And before we go over some cases, let's briefly go over how a thyroid scan is done. It's first done by administering a radioactive tracer either orally or intravenously. We then use a special camera to take images of the thyroid gland and it produces images like the ones you're seeing on the slide here. So in these images, you'll see the two lobes of the thyroid gland as well as how the gland is responding to the radioactive tracer. And so the darker parts of the image are showing you where the tracer is being taken up by the gland. If you'd like some more information about the thyroid scan, feel free to check out the link I've included in the video description below. It's actually done by another YouTube channel, but it's done so well that I felt it would be a great reference. All right, let's now go over the fun part, which is where we discuss different thyroid scan results and try to associate them with their underlying pathologies. So here we have images A through E. Just keep in mind that image A here is what you see with a normal thyroid gland. And the different pathologies that we're going to discuss are included here on the right-hand side. So let's start with image B and try to figure out what would cause an image that looks like this. The correct answer here is Graves' disease. We actually have an entire video where we discuss Graves' disease as well as a thyroid scan result that you'd see with it. So feel free to check that video out. But just to briefly summarize, with Graves' disease, you have an increased production of thyroid hormone that's occurring on a pathological level. And so the thyroid gland is going to take up radioactive tracer to keep up with this production. And it's going to happen homogeneously because the entire gland is involved here. All right, let's now move on to image C. What do you think could cause something that looks like this? And the answer here is toxic multinodular goiter. And this is where you get multiple autonomously functioning nodules. So this means that they function independently of TSH. Unlike what the name suggests, these nodules are typically benign in nature, but the thing to look out for on a thyroid scan is sort of this heterogeneous, patchy uptake in the tracer. And this will be different from Graves' disease because in Graves' disease, the entire gland is involved, and so you get this more homogeneous pattern, whereas with toxic multinodular goiter, you get this patchy uptake because it really depends on where the nodules are and how they're hyperfunctioning. Now let's move on to image D, and the underlying cause here would be a toxic adenoma. A toxic adenoma is a benign tumor, and it presents typically as a palpable thyroid nodule on clinical exam, and sometimes it's found incidentally, as we've mentioned earlier. A toxic adenoma here is going to present as a hot nodule or a hyperfunctioning nodule, and this is just basically where you see a darker nodule on the scan results. And because this nodule is hot and it's producing thyroid hormone, it's going to cause TSH to be low in most cases, and then that leads to suppression of uptake in the surrounding tissues, because as we mentioned, TSH is really what directs thyroid hormone production when things are going normally. And so when TSH is low, the rest of the gland is going to respond appropriately by inhibiting thyroid hormone synthesis. But this toxic adenoma is not responding to TSH, and so it's going to function independently of what's going on. Let's now move on to image E, which is caused by thyroiditis, as I'm sure you've been able to guess since we've discussed all the other causes. And here we're specifically talking about a subacute granulomatous thyroiditis. And this is a typically self-limiting condition that's often in response to some sort of viral infection. And what happens here is that the thyroid is highly inflamed. It's often very tender to touch on clinical exam, which is often a highly tested topic on exam, so watch out for that. And so because the thyroid gland is inflamed, it actually does not trap iodine. It's releasing preformed thyroid hormone. And so initially you get this hyperthyroid phase as you release all this preformed thyroid hormone, it eventually becomes euthyroid as the levels level out. And then you get a hypothyroid phase because the thyroid gland is not producing any thyroid hormone. And so on an uptake scan, you'll see really no uptake in radioactive tracer because the thyroid gland is not producing thyroid hormone. It's actually releasing the thyroid hormone that's already been formed. All right, everyone, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe so that we can keep doing what we're doing. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.